Chapter 14, Giant Sewer Rats, Detours, Toilets, Tattoos, Rock Stars, and Celebrities. Luca, did you call the hotel or the late show yet? Anna asked as Luca rushed past her. We should try to get in touch with Mr. G. Not yet, Anna, Luca answered as she bustled around the set that was buzzing with production and tech crew. I haven't had time. It's always nuts around here before I go live. I'll call as soon as we're off the air, okay? Okay, said Anna. You're on in two minutes, Luca, a guy from the production crew announced. Please clear the set. Bodies Im immediately vanished and the set became quiet. Anna, please go stand with Tony and Mo, Luca said, pointing to the side of the set. You three will be on after Harley. Sure, said Anna. And Harley, please come and take a seat next to me. Luca said as she sat in the second of three plush armchairs. 30 seconds, the production guy announced. When the seconds ticked down to 10, the production guy held up his hands and began a countdown from 10 to 1 with his fingers. When his last finger curled down, he nodded at Luca and an on the air sign. Hanging on the set wall flashed on. This is Luca Stanton Vock. Reporting live for MTV News from our studio in New York City. Sitting next to me is Harley Patrick Davidson, lead singer of the Harley and Angels. He and I will talk about the impact his band is making on the underground rock scene and charity causes in New York City. We'll also talk about the impact Harley has had on children. Luca paused and smiled at Mr. Davidson. Believe it or not, in addition to being a rocker, he's also a fourth grade teacher, so Harley. Tony lightly elbowed Mo and whispered, Are you ready to see some fireworks? What are you talking about? Mo whispered, as dread filled his eyes. Tony arched his eyebrows and smiled. Let's just say that my interview will be interesting. For you, maybe, whispered Mo, but probably not for anyone else. I guarantee that this will be a day to remember in MTV history, and I guarantee that I am never going anywhere with you again. Be quiet. This is a not no talking zone. And, whispered Anna, pointing at Luca, she's about to be done with Mr. Davidson. Harley, Luca said, holding her hand. I'd like to end our interview by saying, keep on teaching and keep on rocking. I will, said Mr. Davidson, as he beamed a large smile at Luca and shook hands with her, because I'm the rocking teacher. Luca looked to the side of the set and winked at Tony, and now I'd like to introduce the worldwide, to the worldwide audience, MTV audience, to a surprise guest that is full of... Well, surprises. It is my pleasure to enter. At that moment, the lights went out, bathing the set in total darkness. An alternative rock music blared out of the massive speakers. Tony rushed onto the set, hopped onto the empty chair, and stood on it facing the cameras. The instrumental introduction blared for about 20 seconds, reached a crescendo, and then when the vocals kicked in, colored and lasered lights flashed on and a fog machine pumped fog onto the set. Tony leaped off the chair, landed on his feet, and began aggressively playing an imaginary guitar, air guitar. A spotlight focused on him as he bounced around the set, mim miming the words to the rock song. Luca sat dumbfounded as she watched her interview turn into a simulated rock concert. Mr. Davidson's head rapidly bobbed up and down, and then he jumped up and grabbed his air guitar and started rocking with Tony. Anna and Mo smiled at each other, nodded their heads, and then raced onto the set to join the concert. Within seconds, tech and production crew members, a couple of MBA types in business suits, a woman with blonde hair and some tattooed, and some tattooed, earring guys hopped onto the set and joined the impromptu rock fest. After a couple of minutes, Tony jumped back on, up onto the chair, faced the cameras, and mimed the final lyrics. 
The song abruptly ended. The lights came on, the fog cleared, and the rockers on the set immediately stopped rocking. They eyeballed one another and then broke into laughter. Tony pumped his fist above his head in triumph, and he dramatically bowed to the rockers around him. Then he turned, faced Luca, and bowed to her. The set immediately became as quiet as a mausoleum. Luca stared at Tony and then turned to the cameras, and a deadpan voice said, And that, NT viewers, is my surprise. Mr. Anthony Madison, the kid in a bear suit from Kansas City. She paused, shook her head, and chuckled. That's it for now. Please stay tuned for my ne next MTV News Report. The off the air sign, the off the air sign flashed on. Rock music immediately blasted through the speakers once again, and everyone started rocking, including Luca Standavok. I can't believe we were just on MTV," said Tony. "Me either," said Anna. "This place is cool. I want to work here when I grow up." So tell me. Tony, exactly how did you pull that off? Luca asked as she narrowed her eyes and locked them with Tony's. You didn't have that much time. Well, Tony said, I hit it off with a production guy when I got here. We talked about this and that, and then before we knew it, it all just sort of fell in a plan. A phone rang and interrupted Tony. Luca pulled her cell phone out of her pocket. Yeah. He's here. Pause. You want to talk to him? Pause. Okay, here he is. Luca handed the phone to Tony. It's for you. Hello, Tony said. Hey, kid. This is David Letterman. Was that Luca Stanovac I was on with the phone? Yeah, it was. I thought so. She's great, isn't she? As far as I'm concerned, she's the only reason to watch MTV. Yeah, she's great. Trouble sort of follows you around, doesn't it, TB? Well, not really, Mr. Letterman. That's Dave, kid. And yes, it does. I heard from Mr. Gore that the three of you were missing. The cops have combed the city looking for you. I was certain that one of New York's giant sewer rats made off with the three of you. And then one of my assistants insisted I look at, this t at his TV. And do you know what I saw? I saw America's newest hero performing on MTV. You're supposed to be on my show, TB, not theirs. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, Dave. Things just sort of happened to me. That's an understatement, TB. Under what? Never mind. I'm going to send my limo over to you. It'll be over in a while. Don't go anywhere. Do you understand? Well, Fred Durst, the lead singer from Limp Biscuit, and the rest of his band are here, and they invited us to go to Greenwich Village to get a tattoo with them. You know, Limp Biscuit style. I know, TB. I saw them performing with you. No matter what those headbangers say, you stay put. If you kids get a tattoo, not only will your parents kill the three of you, they'll kill me as well. And besides... Limp Biscuit will be on my show tonight, so you can hang out with them all you want on my turf. If you say so, Dave. I say so, and so does Mr. Gore. He's here waiting for you as well. Mr. G's there? Good. We were worried about him. I think it is the other way around, TB. Yeah, you're right, Dave. I'm sure I've driven Mr. G crazy once again. I bet he was really worried about us. Yes, you did. And yes, he was, TB. He's sort of like a granny when it comes to worrying. Anyway, can I talk to him? Sure, here he is. Hey, Mr. G. It sure is good to hear, from you, to hear your voice. I'm not sure I can say the same, TB. Your voice sort of gives me the chills. You're a living nightmare, you know. Yeah, I know, Mr. G. Sorry about that. You don't know sorry yet, TB. Wait until I get my hands on you. Please don't kill me, Mr. G. The airport wasn't my fault. It was Alicia Keenan's fault. I don't care whose fault it was, TB. You're still a goner. 
I've nearly gone crazy worrying about the three of you today. Mr. G, I really am sorry. We tried to call you several times, but your cell phone didn't work. We got that stupid no reception message all the time. We knew you were probably going nuts, so we did try. That's so responsible of you, TB. I'm so impressed that I'm going to nominate you for Kansas City's Citizen of the Year. And since I'm such a nice guy and you're now a half goner, but only because my cell phone company stinks. Mr. G, you have to believe me. When he couldn't get a hold of you, we decided to find Dave because we knew he'd know how to find you. Okay, TB, I believe you, sort of, and as you know, I'm a really sensitive guy and your story really touches my heart, so your classification as it has dropped to a quarter goner. Fortune has come your way, TB, but... I'll not negotiate any lower. Is that understood? You still have to answer to me for what happened today. Yes, sir, I understand. We'll discuss things when you get here, okay? Okay, Mr. G. Please don't kill Anna and Mo. It was all my fault. I never considered killing them, TB. Oh. And TB, it, uh is good to hear your voice. Yours too, Mr. G. Okay, enough of this mushy stuff. Mr. Letterman wants to talk to you again. See you in a bit. Hey, TB, it's Dave again. I'm not so sure I'd come over here if I were you. Mr. G's a pretty big guy. Yeah, but his heart is like a marshmallow, so he probably won't kill me. Well, hopefully. Anyway, guess who kissed me, Dave? Who? Madonna? How did you know? Well, TB, I saw her rocking with you during the MTV stint. I ain't blind, you know. Whatever, Dave. Anyway, she thinks I'm the cutest thing she's ever seen. She wants to take us to Toys R Us in a couple of minutes, and then she wants to take us to... Don't tell her you know me, TB, or she'll kidnap you. Just stay with Luca when we hang up. No tattoos, no toys, understand? Yeah, good. Please give the phone back to Luca and let me tell, let me talk to her. See you soon. See you soon too, Dave, Tony said, handing the phone to Luca. Luca listened quietly for a couple of minutes and said, seriously? Pause. My schedule's pretty full, but I'm sure I could squeeze in the afternoon for the late show. Pause. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Pause. I promise that they won't get out of my sight. And don't bother with sending someone over. I'll personally deliver them to your theater. Why take any chances with them? Pause. Of course I'm right. We'll be there after a while. You have my word. She ended the call and said, the four of us are going to the Ed Sullivan Theater as soon as possible. We'll take them, interrupted Mr. Davidson, nodding at a couple of bikers standing nearby. And you as well, Luca. Like you said, why take any chances with them? Thanks, Harley. If the Hells Angels can't deliver them to the late show, then nobody can. Luca paused and looked at the kids. We're going straight to the lobby. No detours, no toolets, no tattoos. No rock stars, no celebrities, let's go.